Oh, thank you. What do I press? Good afternoon, everyone. The title of this sermon is Who Do You Serve? Yourself, Jesus, the world? Who do you serve? 我们大家好，我们今天的主题是啊，我们侍奉谁？Jesus has been telling stories of God's amazing grace and love, but the religious people don't like it. They don't like it. The Pharisees, the teachers of the law. If you remember the story of the two brothers, one asked his father. To give him money before his father died, so he can go to do whatever he do whatever he wants. So he goes, he spends all that money, he wastes that money, and he comes back very sad. And his father welcomes him home and says, "My son, let us throw a party." But his older brother was not happy. He should be punished. Why is my father throwing a party? He is not worthy of my father's love. 主耶稣基督常用不同的比喻和故事来讲述上帝如何爱世人，以及他赐给全人类的奇妙恩典。当时的犹太宗教领袖对耶稣的教导反应不一。您还记得路加福音十五章所记载的浪子和他的哥哥的故事吗？故事里记载了一位父亲有两个儿子。某天，小儿子要求父亲分家产，并离家出走。得到财产后，他肆意挥霍，结果导致穷困潦倒。当他醒悟过来后，回家请求父亲的原谅，并且重新获得了父亲的爱。当时的听众在听完这位父亲完全接纳并原谅了浪子回头的小儿子时，是震惊的，因为这个故事颠覆了他们以往的认知。他们认为父亲应该惩罚，而不是原谅小儿子所犯的错误。他们如同故事里的大儿子。认为他的弟弟不配得父亲慷慨的爱，也不值得父亲为弟弟的回归欢宴庆祝。So these stories that Jesus tells us go to the heart. How does God see you? How does God see us at Tima? Do we honor God or we honor ourselves? How do they shape our lives, God's ways? How do you and I look at each other? Do I judge other people less, not worthy of God's love, because I am good? The new people, the new people that followed Jesus, did not go to school. They were fisher people. They were poor people, and their worlds were changed because Jesus welcomed all people. No, you're bad. So you can't come into God's kingdom. No, Jesus said, "You are welcome. You are welcome into my kingdom." This passage of scripture prompts us to reflect on our own self-esteem and our self-esteem. How do we assess ourselves? How do we assess ourselves? How do we assess o 对于当时跟随耶稣的群体来说，他们的世界完全被翻转。他们以全新的角度和视角看待对人的爱，以及如何接纳和尊重彼此。没有一个人是被排除在上帝的爱之外。So if you read the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament, there's always a struggle between light and darkness. Those who want to follow God and those who do not want to follow God, they want to do their own thing. Too busy. There is God's light, God's wisdom through knowing Jesus, or the world's wisdom. And the one thing in any culture in out the world is the contrast between the rich and the poor. 回归转向上帝的人与拒绝上帝的人之间的关系，即是整本圣经无论是旧约还是新约的焦点，也是张力所在。圣经中既有上帝的光和智慧，也有黑暗的邪恶势力。无论是在哪个时代、什么地方、何种文化之下
拥有财富的多少都是划分人群的决定性标准。比如，常常有人说，啊、uh, ，这个人有钱，那个人没钱。So for these people who are following Jesus, they have to learn how to be faithful with what they have in their lives. And the story in the book of Luke is about a manager who is going to lose his job. His boss is very angry. You have not done a good job with my money. You are going to lose your job. But the manager is very clever. He doesn't want to do heavy work. He doesn't want to ask for help. He goes very quickly to all his friends and does deals. He cuts away the commission that he put upon them. So he said, "Don't worry about the commission to me. We just cut it. Whatever you owe my master, if it's 180, okay, good, good, good." So what he does is he gets everybody happy. It's a win-win situation. The business relationship is still good. 耶稣的跟随者们面对的下一个挑战是如何善用世上的财富。正如我们今天所读的经文讲到的这一位不义的管家，他的主人对他的所作所为非常生气。啊，他被人控告滥用主人的资产，即将被解雇。这位管家只好自己啊，为自己再找条出路。可是他觉得自己体弱，做不了体力活，又不好意思跟人祈祷。于是他在被解雇前修改账本，取悦主人的债务人，让债务人少写的欠债数量从自己的佣金里面扣除，以此换取离职后这些债务人对他的照顾。管家的处理方式可谓是双赢，啊，债务不仅被免除，还维持了良好的商业合作关系。So the rich boss, the rich man says, "Wow, you are so clever. Wow, you you went around so quickly." And you made it, everything okay. So the point you may ask me is, Penny, are you saying that Jesus wants us to be dishonest? This is crazy. You and I who hear, we want to see the bad manager punished. No good. But what the Bible teaches us is that God looks to our heart. If we want to see people punished, we want to see them pay. For their bad action. So, what example is this? Why is Jesus using this? The manager is praised. His boss says, "Good," not because he was dishonest, but he made everything right. 令人惊讶的是，管家的主人不仅没有斥责他的行为，竟还夸奖他做事精明。这是为什么？难道这段经文是耶稣在教导我们不诚实吗？这听起来不是太荒谬了吗？当我们听到这位管家的所作所为，我们认为他应该为自己不义的行为付出代价，但似乎他不仅从这个棘手的情况中脱身，还不用承担任何后果。我们心中不禁想要问：主耶稣通过这个比喻想传达的到底是什么？为何这么听起来这么……呃，为何这听起来似乎不合常理？其实，这位管家之所以被称赞，并非是因为他不诚实的行为，而是因为他的行为所带来的结果。So this manager he frees his master's debtors, his business partners, their burdens are lightened. Now, isn't that what forgiveness is all about? The boss is happy now with his manager. The manager is not in the black book anymore, and we are thinking now forgiveness has positive consequences for everyone. Thank you. 管家帮他的主人清除了债务，结呃欠债人的负担也被减轻了，这不就是宽恕的结果吗？主人很满意管家的所作所为，所以他们也就不计前嫌了。可见宽恕对所有人都有积极的影响。Well, this manager didn't do the right thing, but then he has an action that makes it right. Jesus tells this story to say to us that forgiveness is available to people who make mistakes, 
who sometimes get caught in difficult situations with family, sometimes over money, maybe something about something else. But this manager, he, if you look at that, he's saying your debts are cancelled, it's all done, it's all right. Now, if God kept a record of Penny and all your negative thoughts and all your mistakes and all your mean thoughts, how would you feel? God has forgiven us in Jesus. And we are like the business partners who were in serious trouble. They couldn't pay back. But the business, the manager went back and made it right. 主耶稣通过这段比喻是想告诉我们，宽恕是为所有人预备的，哪怕我们经常犯错，我们可能以为上帝会把我们所有做错的事都记录下来。我们所犯的每一条错误，如同亏欠上帝的债务，就像经文里
我们就在为自己积攒永恒的奖赏。可能到那一天，我们所帮助的人会在天堂的门口迎接我们。I'll tell you a story about an Australian man long time ago in Sydney. He had a terrible childhood. His parents used to drink, so no school, no education. So he became homeless, poor, and he went around the streets. Teeth were bad, clothes were not good, but he used to go to churches that offered food. And at the age of 45, this man gave his heart to Jesus. Not educated, he did not know how to write. But when he gave his life to Jesus, he went around Sydney writing this word, eternity. E T E R N I T Y. That means eternal life. He was so happy. He was poor. His name was Arthur Stacy, but he was rich in knowing Jesus and the gift of eternal life. So he used to write eternity on the on the floors. And if you go to the Sydney Harbour Bridge, read the Google Arthur Stacy. 呃、uh, ，Penny 牧师在我在这里跟我们分享一段关于啊、uh, Arthur Stacy 的故事。然后 Arthur Stacy 是澳洲人，然后有呃、uh, 他其实有一段很糟糕的童年，然后他的双亲也都沉溺于酒精，所以他也因此从未上过学。他成年之后呃、uh, 就是流浪了很长一段时间，但是在他四十五岁的时候，在一间呃、uh, 提供食物、uh, 免费食物的教会里面。他领受了福音，从此之后用他用他的余生在悉尼的大街小巷下写下 “eternity” 永生这个词。呃，他的此生在世人眼里或许是非常贫穷的，但是他在天堂里是富裕的，因为他认识主耶稣基督。通过主耶稣基督，他得到了呃最珍贵的礼物，嗯、呃，那便是永生。This is a true story. So what stops you and me? If we are so busy and anxious and getting headache and working here and working there, we don't have any focus for Jesus. And sometimes you and I can use what God has given us to be a great musician, to be good with accounting, to be good with digging, to be good with driving for yourself. You're yourself. You are your company. But you're not thinking about how you can be generous. So Jesus says this very hard statement. You cannot serve both God and money. Money is used to help us live, to send our children to be educated, to eat. So when we grow old, we can have a place also that we're comfortable. But if money makes us servants and we have no time for God, it makes God very, very sad. And why did Jesus say this? Not to make us feel bad. He knew. The heart of the religious leaders, they loved money more than people. They loved money more than people, and God loves all people. Thank you. 就是呃，什么会阻止我们忠心的按照上帝的要求去生活呢？就是当我们在赚钱，呃，在为我们的社会地位还有财富忙碌和焦虑的时候，然后我们可能会把自己。最擅长的技能，比如啊、呃，有些人很擅长理财，有些人很擅长跟别人交流，呃，甚至有些人啊、呃、懂得开车，但是我们可能会把这些自己最擅长的技能全用在啊、呃，就是自己的事情上面，比如说啊、呃，但但是 Penny 牧师他不是说这个是不对的，我们还是呃可以用呃上帝给我们的财富去呃赡养我们的家庭，呃照顾我们的孩子，但是我想说他想指的是嗯。呃比如主耶稣基督的这段经文，一个仆人不能侍奉两个主，呃，你们不能又侍奉上帝又侍奉马门，嗯，就是我们辛勤赚钱，我们用自己的特长为自己赚钱是好事情，但是呃，我们要注意，就是爱上帝，呃，还是比赚钱更加重要，因为啊、呃，主耶稣基督曾在这里质问呃法利赛人，问他们说，呃，他们看似那么的忠诚，呃，那么的就是那么的。呃，虔诚，但是他们怎么可以对钱财的贪爱胜过爱上帝 ？So Jesus says, you have to be focused in your love for me. And you have the story if you have read the Bible of the rich young ruler. Lord, 
How can I follow you since I have been a small boy? I have followed all your laws. I have been good. Okay, says Jesus, sell everything you have and give to the poor. Well, the young ruler was very sad. But we don't want to talk bad about him because God's grace then sings my soul, my Savior God. To, God's grace may reach him later. But it is very hard, Jesus says, to be rich. You focus on your money, but you may forget about serving God. Jesus Yebokujangman 他還是希望我們也可以把自己所擁有的投入到上帝國度的事業裡。So I'm nearly finishing, so don't fall asleep, okay? Okay. So I have three I have this word R A I N. First, recognize that Jesus is inviting you to be happy with what you have. Even if it's little, don't compare to your neighbor, your uncle, your sister, your brother, your mother, your father. Be happy with what you have. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And when you give your time to the church, cleaning, singing, doing cooking, whatever, when you are generous, using all this for the young children like Katie, Ellie, using English, Mandarin to speak, to help, everything is for the next generation and the next generation. It will go on and it makes God happy. Now, when you think of Christian organizations, World Vision, Tear Fund, Red Cross, Compassion, whose values? God's values. Share what you have to help the poor of the world live well, like you and me. We Chenzu 他也提到了例如我们熟知的几间基督教慈善组织Tear Compassion, World Fishing, Red Cross 这些组织的创建都是基于基督徒的使命和信念就是把我们所拥有的东西与他人分享让这个世界的贫富差距变得更小 So A, ask, I ask you Are you wasting your time, your energy and money on worthless things that cannot give you riches in heaven. Money cannot buy you love. Many people who are rich are lonely. And you only need to know in the newspapers, pop stars, people who are rich, they sometimes don't want to live because they're lonely. But God loves us for who we are and says, trust me to help you in your life. 请让我们问一下自己我们是否将上帝托付给我们资源浪费在毫无价值的事情上所以金钱并不能给我们带来安全感反而会让我们失去因为相信上帝的爱上帝的信实和良善而拥有的安全感。You know the story, let me tell you a story about Jonah. He did not want to go where God called him to go to Nineveh. No, they are bad people. I don't want to tell them about your love. They are wicked. No. So Jonah goes on a boat and 
Soon there is a storm and the sailors throw him into the sea and a big whale eats him up and he's in the tummy of the whale. It's dark, but Jonah, in the darkness of the whale's stomach, Jonah was sorry that he had a hard heart to God. Then he says this, those who cling to worthless idols turn away to God. I will now say, Jonas learned something. Salvation comes from the Lord. God changed Jonah's heart from darkness to light. Just at the way he changes my heart and your heart. Uh, Penny 在这边讲到了约拿的故事。呃,原来一开始他不想顺服神,因为他认为尼尼威人都是这他们都不值得被拯救。于是上帝派一条大鱼把约拿给吞到了肚子里面don't fall asleep. Recognize. Ah, be faithful with what you have and use it. And be generous for God. Ask yourself, am I wasting my time and energy on things that are taking me away from God? Investigate. Find out how you can use your skills to help the ministry team in this church or anywhere else. Driving, helping, cooking, helping with the children, singing, whatever. See how God can use you with your kind heart. Uh,Penny牧师其实在这边鼓励大家去想想看我们自己的技能和天赋到底是什么。我们其实真的可以用自己的技能和天赋来帮助一起建造上帝的国。就比如说我们可以一起帮助这个,帮助我们的教会,成